Welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, the Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on the Jet Setter Show. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times, and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. Welcome to the Jet Setter Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, and I have been jet setting recently and wanted to give you a little update on my travels. I am now up to 64 unique countries. On this last trip, I thought I would only be up to 63, but we had a little surprise excursion, a very short one, mind you, to the neighboring country, and I got another stamp in my passport, so I'm, I'm up to 64 countries, and I have to say, many of those countries I've visited many, many times, so 64 unique countries. But I've got my travel companion for the last trip here with me. He is one of the investment counselors at my real estate investing firm, Platinum Properties Investor Network, and he specializes mostly in commercial real estate and got a hall pass from the wife. And did your kid miss you? I don't know. Yeah, well, they both out. missed me. I hope Are they you both missed you. <laughs> and, um, anyway, it is Tim who's here with me. Say hello, Tim. How are you doing, everybody? Good. And we went to Belize, and Tim's been interested in looking offshore, looking at other countries, places to retire, stretch your retirement dollar, diversify assets, because who knows the, the long arm of the Obama regime. And I don't want to just blame Obama because, frankly, they're all that way nowadays. It's, a, uh, it it's doesn't the matter government what side in total. The, the government is, is really reaching into all kinds of inappropriate places nowadays in the U.S. So is TSA, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just ask Jesse Ventura. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, Tim and I want to talk about our trip to Belize, and, and 64th country for me was Guatemala. Guatemala, right next yeah. door. We went over there. First, I think Tim's impressions were a little more positive than mine. So let's start with the good. Well, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we saw the exact same things. We just uh, had different feelings about it. You know, it is it is Latin America, it's Central America. Poverty was evident. I mean, poverty for, through the eyes of an American. I mean, which the people that were there were very happy, very friendly. They treated us very well. For us, I mean, especially coming from a, a, a wealthy area like Orange County, the dirty roads, the trash on the ground here and there, and, uh, you know, the congestion and things like that were not that appealing to us. But, um, I mean, I've seen conditions like that inside the U.S. in some places as well. But what I did see was, um, you know, I saw clean air. I saw, you know, healthy food, and I saw a lot of Americans down there. I was a surprised. lot of Americans. That was really quite a surprise to me. And I was also very surprised to find out that 80% of all of the land that's privately owned in Belize is owned by Americans. That is really amazing. I mean, the American presence in Belize is mind-boggling. I mean, Tim, we'd be at restaurants, we'd be looking around town. It's like everybody is American or Canadian, practically. It, it was amazing to me. I just didn't expect that. Well, I, the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that everybody spoke English. Mm -hmm. For example, when we were on the beach on the island, uh, these two Mayan women came up to me, and I was expecting to barely be able to understand them. They <laughs> spoke perfect English, and I it just, I'm not used to that. I've been to other Latin American countries where they don't speak English at all, but the national language in Belize is English. Yeah, that makes it pretty convenient. The other thing that makes Belize very convenient, I'll say two other things right, right at the moment offhand, is that... Number one, if you had to, you can drive on land. 
from right. the U.S. to Belize. You can drive right down from Texas. The other thing is, though, the currency is pegged to the dollar, so it's really easy in terms of conversion. Not only do you have the language that's really easy and favorable, but it's just a two-to-one ratio. Right. So anything that's $20 Belize is $10 U.S. Not that I have much faith in the U.S. dollar, mind you, but that does make things easier for an American. Right. Or even a Canadian, really. What other impressions did you have? Well, I thought one of the other things that I like about Belize is I've, I felt safe there. I like the fact that they use British common law. You know, I mean, it used to be British Honduras. And yeah. the benefit is, though, they don't drive on the wrong side of the street like those darn Brits. Yeah. You know, I was even surprised though it's a British well. colony, yeah. You know, it's, it's a legal system that we're familiar with here in the U.S., and uh, they also still have great banking in Belize. You know, now with the collapse of the favorable banking laws in Panama, I think that we're going to see a lot of people uh, moving capital into uh, banks international banks in Belize. That was one of the reasons I actually wanted to tag along with Tim on this trip. I just like going anywhere pretty much. But with Belize, I had actually filled out the application to do a bank account there before the end of the year because I heard there was some change in the law. And I'm not sure that was really true, but I just went ahead and did it. No big deal. And I thought I would move just a little bit of money down there. Of course, do it all legally, report it to the IRS, put it on your tax return, etc. I, I would not recommend hiding anything or no doing anything inappropriate like that. But I wanted to just diversify because if the whole system in America collapses, we came pretty close to that a couple of years ago. It's just a diversification play, if nothing else. Yeah, and I, I did that and I didn't fund the account. And then Tim and I went to the bank, the right. physical bank there on the island in the city of San Pedro. And I, I just didn't have a great impression of that. Uh, my check is still in my pocket as well. Yeah, you, you didn't <laughs> open an account either. You know, uh, opening an account in Swiss francs sounded very appealing, but, you know... I, and, I, and Switzerland, I guess, won't take Americans anymore, thanks exactly, to Obama. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that other nations are going to follow suit. You know, the requirements for reporting for the United States are getting harder and harder on other nations. And now I understand in 2013, they're going to make it even more difficult for other uh, for banks and other nations to do business with Americans. So um, I know I'm going to have to do something. I haven't figured it out just yet. Yeah, it seems like there's a, a scarlet letter now because America's throwing their weight around and they don't want people keeping money offshore. They want to make it difficult, obviously. But let me just tell you my impression of the bank. And Tim, I'm sure you're going to have a lot to add to this. We went into the bank and was in this building that was kind of like a newer building, three-story building, walked up the stairs, and the building was mostly vacant. That has nothing to do with the bank, really, but it just, I don't know, didn't give me a great impression. And the bank was on the top floor. I guess they had about half of the top floor and sat down with the lady that I had spoken with on the phone there. And I asked her a little bit about the bank. I said, how long has it been in business? She said, since 2003, so seven years. I said, well, do you have other branches? She says, no, this is the only branch. How many employees does the bank have? This was the one that kind of, <laughs> I didn't like hearing this too much. Seven. I was surprised as well. For some reason, I just... Uh, maybe I'm just too American in my view, but I just think that a bank should say they have several branches and a lot of employees, so they seem stable. One employee per year. Yeah, exactly. One employee per year. In, in addition to that, there's no sort of FDIC insurance, which... The FDIC in the U.S., I, I've predicted a long time ago, the FDIC is going to go bankrupt in the, in the sure. States. But, of course, they're just going to bail out for more money printing from the U.S. government right. <laughs> and the Federal Reserve. But there's no FDIC insurance. However, they claim that their banks are far more stable because their reserve ratio is so much higher. Right. And that makes a lot of sense to me. They said their reserve ratio, I believe, is 23 or 24 percent. I think she said 24 percent. Yeah, much higher than the U.S. Oh, I mean, the U.S., I don't know what it is offhand, but I think it's around 3 percent now or right. something like that. It's it's really, really low. And that's why our, our whole system here is, is, in essence, just a Ponzi scheme uh, of sorts. But anything to add to the impression of the bank there? Obviously, you didn't open an account either. so No. And there are other things that you can do with your money in order to protect it. And um, I just started thinking, well, I would prefer just to be able to access my money easier. I, I thought that the bank, I mean, the bank came highly recommended. And I thought that they... And a uh, lot of people there that we talked to recommended that bank too. Right, right. And um, some of the people that, that you and I both know uh, have recommended them. And uh, I just felt like maybe it was a little premature at this point for me. So other impressions of, of, of the trip? 
Well, also, we should talk about our little side trip to Guatemala, too. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, let's talk about the Mayan ruins. I thought that was pretty neat uh, when we went to Zanantanich. Uh, I especially liked that one. Um, I thought the jungles were beautiful. There were a lot of nice places to live. I mean, you and I both saw some very nice homes, um, some very nice neighborhoods. And, and then, you know, the towns were where uh, people who couldn't afford to live outside of town, they didn't have vehicles or whatever, that's where they would live. Much like other towns in uh, Central and South America that I've seen. But I think if, from a standpoint, if you're looking for some place where quality of life is good and you're looking for some place where you can buy property for cheap, it's certainly worth a look. But I would highly recommend that before you buy anything, take a trip down there. Uh, give us a call. We'll fill you in on uh, on the agents that we met that we really like. Um, we'll tell you the areas to look in. We'll help you out any way we can. My impression, I'm not Having been to so many countries, I, my personal taste is is making me very subjective. Personally, I like Europe. I like Russia. I, I like architecture and culture, and I like cities more than suburban or, or country. Well, some country areas I really like a lot. I shouldn't say that. But yeah, I'm just not crazy about like the sort of banana republic type places where there's a lot of poverty and, and stuff like that. And of course, you can't say there's not a lot of poverty in Russia for sure. I can't stand the snow. I don't know. I, the week before we went on that trip, it's kind of funny because I had a, quite a variety in my travels I, I, in, in, inside of two weeks. I was in Kansas City, Missouri, looking at some properties there because that's been one of our markets for many years that we've recommended to investors from all over the world, among several other markets. Our, our big markets now are, are, are Phoenix, Dallas, Atlanta. Uh, Indianapolis, Kansas City is pretty good, Houston. We've done a lot of business in Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and other, many other markets recommending income property and, and real estate investments to investors from all around the world and talk about this more on the Creating Wealth Show. But I, I was there in Kansas City, and one night when I was there, Tim, it was negative 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's funny because my mother is from upstate New York. And she wouldn't even consider ever living in a cold climate again. Middle of five children, every single kid left the moment they turned 18 and moved to California. You, you've lived a lot of places. Yes. And I've mostly just spent my life in California. So uh, it's sort of hard to fathom that cold until you live in it and really understand what a massive hassle it can be. Some people can live in it, but I, I kind of... I choose I not to. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. And then I was in Aspen, Colorado skiing and hanging out with a bunch of Ayn Rand friends, business people, internet marketers there. And so I went from cold to, I came back for a little while to take care of some business and then went off to the tropical Belize with you. And that was quite a switch. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. really was. My impression is that I think Belize could be a great place to retire. Comparing it to Newport Beach, California, here where I live, if you wanted to live on the water and have a boat here, your choice would probably li be to live on an area called Lido Island mm -hmm. or one of the other Balboa islands here, or, or Balboa Island, where peninsula. you could have a boat slip in front of your house. And in Belize, it, it's really pretty amazing. Outside of San Pedro, you could buy waterfront lot right. on beautiful, crystal clear water, shallow water that you can walk maybe a couple hundred feet offshore. It'd be only up to your neck or, or your shoulders. And you could have a boat. Some of the best you, diving in the world. You could have a boat slip. We went snorkeling. It was That was a pretty awesome yeah. adventure. And we'll get back to that in a moment. But <laughs> you could have 75 feet on the water. You could buy a lot that is nice and deep and wide, and you could have your own boat dock, maybe $300,000 for the lot. You could spend more if you wanted to, but say three hundred, you could you could get in. Yeah. You could build a house for around $125 to $150 per square foot. You could have your own dock. That's a pretty nice life for someone yeah. who really likes the water, the beach, yep. and a boat. Year-round good weather. Oh, fantastic weather. English speaking. It's kind of like the Jimmy Buffett lifestyle. Yeah, and it's getting harder and harder to find that in the Caribbean. Yeah, and, and if you wanted to do that in Newport Beach, it would cost you 8 to $12 million. Right. So quite a difference in price, huh? Yeah, one-tenth at least. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty amazing. And property taxes there are so incredibly low. I, being a small government libertarian type person, I was really found myself over there saying, I think they should raise the taxes a little yeah. bit to build some roads and, and some infrastructure, yeah. which I, I couldn't believe those words were coming out of my mouth. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised. We were talking about property taxes on some of the properties, and they were $50. 
hundred dollars a year per year. Yeah. yeah, not per month. Really amazing. <laughs> really amazing. Insurance not very expensive from what mm. we heard. Similar Comparable. to what yeah. we're, what we're what we're used to. And as in most of these foreign countries, the real estate people aren't licensed. They don't have any license licensure. There's no license laws. You're just there and you decide, hey, I'm, I'm going to sell real estate. And that's what you do. So it's really important that listeners, if they're interested, are very careful and they, they get put in touch with the right people by referral. And we felt that we did some good due diligence when we were there. We looked at real estate in two locations. Do you want to talk about San Ignacio, our first location? Tim? That sure. was our first experience looking at real estate. The second one, we, we looked at real estate on a boat. Mm-hmm. So that was the first time I had a real estate tour on the water. Yeah, two completely different markets. Uh, San Ignacio was about just a stone's throw away from the Guatemalan border and about two hours drive from the coast. Very inexpensive real estate. We saw a uh, fairly nice duplex for $50,000. It was owned by a retired Catholic priest, Father Joe, I think his name was. I have to throw something in here, though, Tim. I didn't think it was very nice, that duplex for fifty grand. <laughs> well, I, 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 compared to some of the other things that were there, it was somebody had done some work to it and had made it look nice from the outside. It still needed some work on the inside, especially. But the rental market is, there. the rentals are in demand down there. There are a lot of Americans that are retiring there, and they don't have enough uh, nice rental properties properties, uh, but it's not some place that you're going to get uh, a huge benefit from. If you're looking to retire there, you know, you could probably buy a decent place for sixty or $70,000, and the food is, eh, I would say maybe it's comparable in price to here, maybe a little bit cheaper. Um, but a, little, a little cheaper. It's definitely a little cheaper, yeah. I'd say. And labor is certainly cheaper down there. Yeah, labor a lot cheaper. And your real estate is definitely cheaper too. Your cost of construction was not surprisingly cheap. And and one of the reasons for that is that everything's pretty much imported except hardwoods. And you've got beautiful hardwoods. I mean, Belize is really known for their their woodwork. And beautiful hardwoods, but construction costs, uh, they're not crazy expensive, but they're not dirt cheap either. Yeah, you know, maybe 3,000 years ago, you know, when the Mayans were building all those cities, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe materials and labor were easier to come by. But, yeah, I think a lot of just about everything's got to be imported. It's a small country, 300,000 people. When we landed in the airport, we basically drove across, literally we drove across the whole country in the matter of a few hours to San Ignacio, stayed there for two nights, and then went back over to the island and really on Ambergris K, enjoyed the island a lot more, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to our our, uh, spoiled Orange County eyes, the island was certainly a a welcome change. It was, definitely. But when we were in San Ignacio, like you said, it's just a stone throw away from the Guatemalan border. And it was $37.50 to cross the border. And (laughs) your $2 beer. Yours truly had to get another stamp in his passport and, and get it up to number 64 and cross the border. And I said, let's just go over there and we'll have a beer and we'll just come back. And, <laughs> and, and we walked a few blocks in and, and Guatemala kind of lived up to its reputation. It's, it's, it's pretty poverty stricken. It's pretty sad, really. Yeah, and I didn't feel nearly as safe there as I did when we were in Belize. Yeah, I, I, I'd say that's true. But boy, it was, it was, it was depressing. People doing their laundry in the river and bathing themselves in the river, and it, it was not very nice. Uh, and, and I think we kind of made a couple people's day because we had some extra currency, and rather than change it back in, you handed a big bill, Tim, to a guy in a wheelchair, and that was very nice yeah, of you. Yeah, 20 catal. I yeah. think it was like $3. But, but he uh, was happy to get oh it. Oh, boy. I tell you, that w- that made all the difference to him, and, and a nice tip to the lady that owned the place where we had two cervezas. Yeah. She yeah. was very shocked to get that 10 catal, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so dollar fifty. Yeah, dollar fifty. But she sir sure seemed appreciative, that's for sure. And so anyway, Mayan ruins came back like the island a lot better, which by the way I should say, that is the island that Madonna wrote the song La Isla Bonita. That was the island of Ambergris K and, and the city of San Pedro where we stayed. We got a nice beachfront condo, shared the condo there for three days. That was really a nice place, had two bedrooms, so we had our own thing and right on the on the the beachfront had a great snorkeling trip, the best one I've ever been on, not yeah. the best one you've been on, but you're a, you're a diver and you do that often. And stingray, eel, shark, a whole bunch of great fish. That was yeah. pretty cool. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and the uh, the guys were great too. They were, there was a, a small dive shack just outside of our, uh, out of the condo that we stayed at and uh, 
if you go down there, say hi to Dave and Argyle. Yeah, they were the stereotypical Rastafarians, I would say. They were yeah. really quite cool. It's like, yeah. hey, man. <laughs> they, they, and they, they knew were, what they were doing, too. They, they were fun to hang out with, and they showed us around the seas there and took us snorkeling. Well, good stuff. Any closing thoughts on Belize? Well, I think that for me, personally, I thought that the best opportunities were on the island. I thought it was interesting that since 2008, so roughly three years, in one of the worst economic environments in this country with in terms of uh, real estate prices, their real estate actually went up about 50%. And um, the uh, agent that we, that we spent most of our time with felt like there was still a lot of room to go. Um, they were continually expanding the utilities on the island, so there were more parts of the island further and further north that were getting water and power and the property values were climbing and he said that he felt there was a really good opportunity there to do land banking which uh, seemed to be like about the best opportunity that we saw the whole time we were there. Yeah, and I would say definitely as a retirement spot, Belize should be highly considered. It's amazing how close it was to Houston. I believe the flight back, it was a cinch. I think it was two hours and nine minutes back. It was really quite easy, much closer than I originally thought without really looking at the map and going on the flight. It's a lot further from L.A. to Houston than it is from Houston to Belize. That's for sure, and a much more pleasant flight, too, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, good. Well, what's next? Is it Ecuador? Yes. I'm dying to go to Ecuador. Yeah, me too. I really want to get down there. I have not been before and very interested in looking at Ecuador as a potential destination. I was talking when I was in Aspen, by the way, I met the sovereign man, Simon Black, not his real name, but I know his real name. I guess I won't reveal it on the show. And I talked with him for a while and, and he really likes Chile. He did say banking was a good opportunity in Belize. And so it's just interesting to get all these perspectives, but just want to encourage our listeners, be careful. There's a lot of charlatans out there. There are a lot of people sort of promoting this international living type concept, and you, you just got to be careful. Really be careful. You don't have, if you're from a Western country, you don't have the recourse that you might in, in your home country that you're used to. So proceed right. with caution, but do proceed because there's some interesting stuff out there. There's a lot of life to live. Yep, there sure is. All right. Well, Tim, hey, thanks for sharing your thoughts on, on Belize and Guatemala, and we will be back to you soon with a report on a bunch of other great topics, not the least of which will be an upcoming trip to Ecuador and and some other places. I look forward to it. All right. Happy jet setting, folks. And visit our website at jetsettershow.com. That's jetsettershow.com. Check out our blog there. We've got a bunch of great content for you on the blog as well. Take care. You know, Penny, sometimes I think of Jason Hartman as a walking encyclopedia on the subject of creating wealth. Well, you're probably not far off from the truth, Britch. Jason actually has a six-book set on creating wealth that comes with over 100 hours of the most comprehensive ideas on investing in business. They're in high-quality digital download audio format, ready for your car, iPod, or wherever you want to learn. Yes, and by the way, he's recently added another book to the series that shows you investing the way it should be. This is a world where anything less than a 26% annual return is disappointing. Jason actually shows us how we can be excited about these scary times and exploit the incredible opportunities this present economy has afforded us. We can pick local markets that are untouched by the economic downturn, exploit packaged commodities investing, and achieve exceptional returns safely and securely. I like how he teaches us how to protect the equity in your home before it disappears and how to outsource your debt obligations to the government. He's recorded interviews with Harry Dent, Peter Schiff, Robert Kiyosaki, Pat Buchanan, Catherine Austin Fitz, Dr. Dennis Waitley, T. Harv Ecker, and so many others who are experts on the economy, on real estate, and on creating wealth. And the entire set of advanced strategies for wealth creation is being offered with a savings of $385. Now to get your Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series complete with over 100 hours of audio and six books, go to jasonhartman.com forward slash store. If you want to be able to sit back and collect checks every month, just like a banker, Jason's Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series is for you. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www 
hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.